Welcome to the Dripping in Black podcast, where we celebrate Black excellence throughout the Black diaspora. Here's your host, David V. Lewis. What's up, good people all across the world? This is the Dripping in Black podcast. I'm your host, David V. Lewis. And on this podcast, what we do is recognize Black excellence in all walks of life. Today, we have a very, very special guest who is, I would say, an inspiration for this podcast by the name of Tracy Causey Bryant. Tracy Causey Bryant, say hello to the world. Hello, world. All right, so we're going to just have a conversation. Um, What we like to do on this podcast is through the interview and the interviewee, show the world about Black excellence because we want to Um, reclaim the narrative of what it means to be Black. Uh, Oftentimes we think of Black in a negative connotation, but we all know that Black is excellent. And so that's what we're here to to, uh, showcase. All right, so let's talk about um, TCB. We know each other well. Um, TCB is short for Tracy Causey Bryant. Uh, I gave her a personal moniker of TCB the Queen because that's the aura that she has. But um, we met a while ago. You want to tell the world how we came, how we came to know one another. Thank you, David. Um, and thank you for that queen recognition. Um, we met probably about 12 years ago. Um, we both taught high school in Inkster Public Schools at Inkster High School. And we went through a wonderful process called Critical Friends. And through that journey, we literally became a very tight-knit circle. Um, and critical friends is an understatement. Yeah. 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 So we became real critical friends. We have been friends ever since. So in, uh, in an effort of full transparency, I just want the audience to know that this is a close and personal friend that we are interviewing, not just someone who we know is excellent in all that they do. All right, so I thought that it would be smart to begin with a little background of your history. Uh, We can talk to you uh, Mm -hmm. about a lot of things, and we're not going to touch on everything today, but let's set the stage by giving a little personal background of who you are and where you're from. So I am um, born and raised, I'm a native Detroiter, born and raised in Detroit, Um, East Side child. I'm very proud of it. Parents were entrepreneurs. Um, my mother and father, father owned a party store. Um, very hardworking parents. Um, I'm the youngest of 10. <laughs> um, wow. Yes, I am um, the wife of Jerron Bryant, who is also my co-partner. He's the president of Black Lit Matters and um, the mother of two, Brandy and Brayden. All right, excellent. And so we mentioned this uh, idea of, or this organization, actually, right? This LLC of Black Lit Matters. So we'll get to that a little bit later. But we met, as you said earlier, uh, in the realm of education. So tell the world a little bit about your educational background. So I, um, I would like to speak about the positive things about my educational background, because I think that that story matters. Um, My teachers from elementary school were extremely inspirational. Um, I had a vast majority of black teachers, which I think is very, very important in today's educational system. Um, They had a standard of excellence um, and the things that they instilled in me, um, I believe is what made me catapult into education and into wanting to do more in the realm of learning. So I um, graduated high school salutatorian, very proud of that. Um, Went on to college on a scholarship, um, maintained my bachelor's degree, master's degree, and then went back further and got my educational specialist certification. Um, And that's my educational journey. Uh, And that, in that journey, I have been um, a teacher, proud educator. I have taught K through 12 as well as college. Um, 
I did that in conjunction while I was teaching K through 12. I was also teaching as a college professor. Um, and from that, I went from teacher to department chair to supervisor to principal. And currently I am a principal at an elementary school where I am extremely happy and passionate about my students. Excellent, excellent. And so when I met you, you were a teacher in the classroom and you taught the subject of English. And what would you say is the most important lessons that you try to teach through English? Wow, the most important lessons, I think it doesn't matter what subject it is. I think the most important lessons is when you make those connections and build those relationships with your students, you open up a box that allows them to understand the importance of learning. Yeah. And so whatever the subject matter is, building the relationship was pertinent and getting them to discover their own journey in education. And so from there, um, it turns into a joy. And I had a wonderful journey with my students as they learned um, because I did bring lessons that were rich, current, relevant to them um, and try to do as much as I possibly could to give them representations in the lessons that reflected their community, um, their home life, their culture, which was also my culture. So I was always thinking in terms of how my students will receive whatever lesson it was that I was delivering. Yeah. Yeah. And a major part of that, what you say is, is reading. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So, let's talk about that. What, why is reading um, valuable? Well, um, it's valuable for several reasons. Number one, um, anything that our students need to know, we know that the literacy rate in our country is um, eighth grade level average, third grade level a little more than average. Um, and when you think about that, you think about the adults that are walking around currently today that look at reading as punitive or yeah. boring. Um, and so I think about the youth. If they see and are exposed to more literature that they're interested in, you may not always introduce it in a way where it's a must read, but if you put books in front of kids and, and, and adults, that pique their interests, that opens up that world of wanting to read more. And I think our community will benefit from reading more, reading in front of our kids, reading to our kids, and reading with our kids. And so when they see adults reading, they in turn will also want to read. So mm -hmm. promoting reading is a huge piece in my life. Very well said. I think uh, you you, you, you set my mind to thinking about people that are revolutionary when they're passionate about something they don't just talk about it but they act upon it and they leave a legacy behind that shows that and so I got several people in mind but I, don't, I won't go down a list of pe people but what I want to talk about now is because you spoke so passionately about the importance of reading and this summer you were able to start uh, Black Lit Matters. And actually, I think it started early in the, uh, in the spring. So tell the world about uh, Black Lit Matters. Uh, give us where, where did the idea come from and then how it evolved into what it is today. Okay. Um, and I say this with joy in my heart because, um, you know, you never know when seeds are planted or, or when the Lord um, gives you something plants it in your heart, you know, you don't know how it's going to manifest or where it's going to go. But um, my husband and my daughter and myself would read these books, a variety of books, different genres, and we would always talk about them. And um, as a result of constantly talking about them, um, there were extended conversations where we would get so excited and say, you know, we need to be doing more to talk about this. And so in addition to that, um, when uh, COVID-19 hit in March, um, my husband and two other Black fathers, our children all go to school together. They're in the same class. So three Black men, my husband included, 
um, got together and started their own black male um, book club. And I thought that was absolutely amazing. Um, number one, I was excited that we had three black children. All three of our black children were in the same class together and all three of their black dads were actually in a black reading club together. Wow. And so that was extremely, extremely powerful for me. Um, I was more excited about my son and the other two children, um, just seeing the dads get together and reading and talking yeah. about what they were reading. So that in turn sparked more conversations with a small group of my friends. And some of them included you, David, and um, Sean. We were all together one evening and um, just having a discussion and constantly, again, talking about, it would be so cool for us to start talking about books that we've read. And from there, um, this was birthed. It was, um, it was not quite as clear the direction I wanted it to go, but I knew I got extremely excited internally. There was a fire burning that I knew this was something that I really wanted to do. And it was almost uh, the perfect timing. Uh, it was a perfect storm because we were all on shutdown and quarantine. So we were all in the house and trying to figure out ways to be creative with spending our time at home and not being able to see our close friends and socialize in the manner in which we once did. And so the more we were sitting, the more we talked about it, um, I said, you know, maybe we can do Zoom um, <laughs> book clubs and reached out to a few friends. We had some more dialogue about it and talked, over, talked it over with my husband and my daughter and um, they loved the idea. My daughter said, this is something that is going to be bigger than what you really know, mom. This, this is your passion. And so she really pushed it and she got extremely excited about it. And so from that conversation with the two of them, um, we, we sparked this. Mm -hmm. and so hence we have Black Lit Matters. Yeah. So again, Black Lit Matters is a book club that meets through Zoom. How often do, does the book club meet? So currently we meet weekly um, on Wednesday evenings and we are always featuring um, books that promote Black authors or Black characters or Black experiences. So it's Black books, Black authors, Black characters, Black experiences. And we do that, um, number one, to continue to uplift and support our community. Number two, to promote literacy in our community and to also support Black authors. Um, so we do several different pieces when we are on our Zoom calls. Um, the book club um, does a raffle um, donation and we take that money and we send students or children um, black books, surprise books in the mail and they come from Black Lit Matters and it's from our black book club from Black Lit Matters where we get the names of children that are selected. And so we make sure that we send kids books with black characters so they see a representation and a reflection of who they are and celebrate that beautiful black and brown child. Yeah. So, you know, this is, uh, when you told me about it, uh, I got excited about just the book club in general. But then we, we, when we dig into the deeper details about how you have an adults read uh, black literature written by black authors um, telling our stories, but then also the raffle, as you mentioned, that leads to uh, young children getting black books in their hands with black characters. Um, it's just such a well-rounded, uh, rich experience that's far reaching. And so I just wanted to commend you on, on um, what's being done with Black Lit Matters. Now, my next question is, um, do you know how many kids you have, have received books through this uh, Black Lit Matters to this so point? We Absolutely. We started off in um, early June and it is now mid-August, almost August 27th, middle, middle of August, going into the end of August. And we have sent over 35 children's books to um, 
surprises, I mean, sent them to children, surprising them. And we've captured those pictures and, and just the joy of them getting excited about receiving a book in the mail with a nice note from Black Lit Matters and um, encouraging them to keep reading. And um, that's probably been the most rewarding experience out of it all. How do you decide uh, what books to get them? I do a survey. So whomever name is selected uh, from our Black Lit Matters uh, reading group, they are um, given a survey to complete a Google form and they ask several questions. The gender of the child, the child's preference, age level, and what their interests are. And again, I mentioned this earlier, it is extremely important to put books of high interest in the hands of children. And if you can find high interest books that are also black authored or have black characters, that's a win-win. And so I am literally intentional when I select these books for the children. So it's always based off of their interests and as well making sure that it's black authors and or black characters. Yeah, so I would say that you may find it a challenge to find those books, would you say? Absolutely, yeah. and, and this has actually opened up another avenue for me. I, I realized in my search, um, trying to seek children's books um, that are very, very reflective of the African-American experiences or black and brown cultures, and when I try to do it based on interest, there's one example that I remember, there was a five-year-old um, boy who loved dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. And I literally spent, I believe, two days searching because I, I just refused to give up. I said, I know there is a black author that wrote a children's book about dinosaurs with black kids in it. And that was a struggle actually searching for that. So that also let me know that number one, we definitely need to be more vocal with um, demanding that we see more representation of books that are interesting to our children. Now, in school and in our actual bookstores and in our community. Um, so I think that in that journey, I realized that we definitely need to have more of a, a wide or vast um, array of books with different types of genres and um, backgrounds that are high interest levels for our, for our children. Yeah. So earlier you mentioned uh, COVID-19 and how that uh, experience has impacted and been part of this journey to bring Black Lit Matters to life. But I also know the name Black Lit Matters. It, it sounds a lot like Black Lives Matter. And so, um, and we know that that's not just a, a movement, but it's a, it's a lifestyle that we're, uh, we're learning to live, right? Um, so talk a little bit about the parallels there with Black Lit Matters and Black Lives Matter. So this is another um, experience where I know that this spiritual walk that, that we are all on, things that happen in different times in our lives are not coincidental. And this was really on the um, cusp of George Floyd's um, death, yes. um, Ahmaud, Breonna Taylor, there was so much unrest and so much tension and uneasiness. I, I literally struggled emotionally going through that period. And I have to go back to, even though we were dealing with COVID-19, I think that the world needed to be still and be quiet during that period of time because it was eye-opening realizing how much our people have literally cried, protested, asked for the same, not extra, just same treatment and equal rights. And I also thought from the lens of those parents and siblings of those sisters and brothers that we've lost. And I believe that understanding how important Black Lives Matter um, really is, I thought more and more and more about our children not having black literature 
introduced to them sometimes throughout their entire K-12 experiences. Yes. Um, I was exposed to more black literature when I got to college and it was literally an African-American literature class. It was not traditional courses. So I became more and more aware during this social unrest of our lack of so many um, areas and aspects and systems in our country where we are underrepresented. And so that I believe sparked even more to say, you know what? We are going to promote, expose, uplift, inspire um, Black literature because our, our families, our kids, our ancestors, our parents, we need to see Black books. We need to see Black children in books. It, even though it starts in our community, I really want the world to understand yeah. that black literature is important because nothing against Shakespeare, but we, we learn Romeo and Juliet. We learn all these, you know, European um, novels and, and stories. And yet there's no mandate that says when you go through school from K through 12, that you must be exposed to these African-American authors, yeah. that you must understand the Harlem Renaissance and know who Langston Hughes is. And oh my goodness, I can go on and on about Black authors. And I just know that other cultures are also missing this beautiful, beautiful yeah. story that unfolds every time we open our books and find out more about our people. And I think that again, building it in our community is first and foremost. And I looked at how much pain our community was in after the deaths of our brothers and sisters. And the world watched it. And in doing that, I think that if they also were exposed to black literature in an appropriate way where it wasn't only if you had an African-American literature class or during February, which is Black History Month, but throughout the entire year. I think that their lens would change as well. And they would feel more comfortable and understand our culture just a little bit more. And so from all of that pain, again, for such a time as this, it, this came about. Yeah. Well, that, that's just an excellent uh, summary uh, of how the time led to this creation. And, and I know it's just getting started. I'm excited about it. Um, I'm, I'm thankful for you bringing it to life. Um, and this to me is a part of the Black Lives Matter um, lifestyle change, you know, introducing the world to Black literature, putting it in front of people and making it matter as well, and because it does. All right, so then there's a, a question that I like to ask uh, our interviewers or interviewees. And the question is, have you ever been on the cover of a magazine? No, I have never been on the cover of a magazine. However, I was featured in My Black is Beautiful. Okay. Yes. And, you know, again, I'm a personal friend of yours, and I know you have quite a few accolades <laughs> that we weren't able to get to, but we tried to come up wow. with a way to <laughs> give you an experience that you have not had yet. Oh, wow. So... <laughs> We have placed you on the cover of our Dripping in Black magazine. I love it. <laughs> Look at that. I absolutely love it. Wow. <laughs> so that I will love be, it. That will be a parting <laughs> gift that we will send to you. Love it. Coming on uh, with, the, with the, uh, the string attached that you come back on at a later date. And we talk a little bit more about some other things that you've done in the realm of excellence. Absolutely. I can't even stop smiling. That is absolutely phenomenal. And I, I guess I'm just honored to not only be a part of Dripping in Black, but for us to tell this story of the richness of our culture and our people. So I, I'm just floored. You, you guys got me over here, just can't stop smiling. <laughs> All right. So the last thing, um, 
you're you're donning a Black Lit Matters T-shirt, and so am I. So I Absolutely. think it's smart for us to get up and show the world what they look like. All I right, I did a great job with it. So, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Yes, indeed. I'll make sure that it's seen nicely. <laughs> Are these t-shirts available for sale? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. www.blacklivematters.com. Mm -hmm. And um, is there any more social media uh, platforms that people can reach out to you and learn a little bit more about Black Lit Matters? Absolutely. We are on Instagram at black.lit.matters. And we are also on Facebook at Black Lit Matters. Um, our Twitter handle is Black Lit for the number four life. Okay. All right. Yes. And we will uh, put that in our show notes. We thank you again, Miss Tracy Causey Bryant, TCB the Queen. Coming, oh, absolutely. <laughs> and coming on to the Black Dripping in Black podcast. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in the future. This is definitely my pleasure. And I am just so proud of the work that you all are doing um, because we are all dripping in black and we let we letting the world see our black excellence. Thank you both, um, David. And I appreciate your partner, Sean. Um, and I, I look forward to coming back again with even more stories to tell. All right. Up next, The Last Drip. Thanks again to the one and only Tracy Causey Bryant for gracing us here at Dripping in Black. I um, hope you all enjoyed that conversation. Um, more to come in the future. Uh, just so much more to talk about with her. But we end our podcast with One Last Drip. One Last Drip is one last opportunity to squeeze in a little more black excellence. So... Since today's episode, we were dripping in black literature, I thought it would be good for us to end this episode talking about the Coretta Scott King Book Awards. These are awards that award uh, that are given to African-American authors and illustrators. They are recognized annually uh, for their outstanding work in books for young adults and children. And these books reflect uh, African-American life and culture. So it's right down uh, what we've been talking about today. Um, recipients gain recognition from these awards. They receive a plaque and they are awarded cash. So when you get a chance, look up the Coretta Scott King Book Awards. Uh, it's an excellent opportunity to add to your book library. And the Coretta Scott King Book Awards were created to commemorate the life and works of Dr. Martin Luther King as well as to honor the courage and determination of Miss Coretta Scott King. All right, so check that out. Until next time, be good, be good, be good. It is a choice. experienced a Dripping in Black production.